Remember, Israel is a microcosm for our own society. And if we judge them, we judge them at our own peril because we stumble with the same sort of things. We have the same rebellion. If it were not, if it were not for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, for His mercy, we would go exactly the same way of rebellion as they went. Not just passiveness, but rebellion against the Lord. And you could see this rebellion in some of their eyes when I would say such a thing as this. We are in uh, Isaiah, we're in the prophet Isaiah, chapter one. And uh, this is an amazing book. I mean, just, just full of prophecy. Some people have called it the gospel according to Isaiah because it's so full of prophecy. And remember, chapter one of Isaiah is an indictment. The entire chapter is, is an indictment where he is, is uh, uh, laying out this court case against the nation of Israel, but particularly just uh, uh, Jerusalem and Judah, this province, this, this state around Jerusalem, Judah and Jerusalem. And God is both the plaintiff and the judge. Heaven and earth are the witnesses. And, and uh, uh, Jerusalem and Judah are on trial. So I'm going to start, we're really going to start teaching from verse 5 because we've covered 1 through 4 already. But uh, I'm going to start reading from verse 1 so we get the context. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, concerning Judah and Jerusalem, which he saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Listen, O heavens, and hear, O earth. For the Lord speaks, sons I have reared and brought up, but they have revolted against me. An ox knows its owner and a donkey its master, its master's manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Alas, sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons who act corruptly. They have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away from him. Where will you be stricken again as you continue in your rebellion? The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is nothing sound in it, only bruises, welts, and raw wounds. Nothing pressed out or bandaged, nor softened with oil. Your land is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your fields, strangers are devouring them in your presence. It is desolation as overthrown by strangers. The daughter of Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a watchman's hut in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. Unless the Lord of hosts had left us a survivor, we would be like Sodom and we would be like Gomorrah. Hear the words of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the instruction, to our instru to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What are your multiplied sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and of fat and fed cattle, and I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. Okay, so let's start, let's look, look from verse five. It says, where will you be stricken again as you continue your rebellion? The whole head is sick, the whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is nothing sound in it, only bruises, welts, and raw wounds, not pressed out, or bandaged, nor softened with oil. So you see that um, uh, he's describing this in the context of if he were addressing a man. And he says, you're, where can I strike you again? I mean, you have gone through so much because of your re rebellion. There's so much suffering already in your life. Where, where can you be stricken again? I mean, he says, I've hit you from every side. Where will you be stricken again as you continue in your rebellion? It was because of their rebellion. It wasn't just a, a passive thing of, of ignoring God. It was out and out rebellion against God. And if you speak to an Orthodox Jew and you say to them, you ask them the question, why did Israel go into captivity for 70 years? What was it that put them in captivity for 70 years? Why the first diaspora where they were thrown out of the land? They will give you three reasons. And their three reasons are, first of all, idol worship. 
Second of all, that they didn't give the land a rest on the, on the Sabbath years, the, the, the Sabbath periods where it was, the land was to be rested. And thirdly, because they did not take care of the orphan and the widow. So that's, that, and, and, and that's actually scripturally aligned. I mean, those, those are the, the three major reasons. Now, idol worship ended after the 70-year uh, deportation to Babylon. When they came back, you never see idol worship again in, in Israel after that. Idol worship went away. To this day, there's no idol worship. Now, there might be an individual that does it, but there's no formal idol worship at all in Israel. And in fact, you're more likely, much more likely to see Gentiles worshiping idols than you, than you will see ever a Jew worshiping idols. Jews are particularly careful of anything that even looks like an idol, anything that looks like an icon or anything like that. Uh, uh, and and they, they were really broken of that. But he says, I've, I've stricken you so hard. He says, the whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there's no, nothing sound in He says, from the soles of your feet, the bottom of your feet to your head, you're totally beaten down. And you still continue in your rebellion. He says, and, and there's, there's no sound in it, bruises and welts and, and raw wounds and, and uh, um, not pressed out or bandaged nor softened with oil. There's no recovery, no desire for recovery from this. You continue in your rebellion. And so there was this constant rebellion and God had put them through so much because of the rebellion. And this is exactly what was prophesied, that if you go against the Lord, these things would come upon you. And uh, um, so if, if you look, for, for example, in, uh, it, in relation to us, how does, how does this somehow relate to us? So, so uh, uh, there, there are scripture texts that uh, uh, relate to us in certain ways. So if you look, for example, in Psalm 32, verse 3 through 6, Psalm 32, verse 3 through 6, the psalmist is writing about sin in his life and the result of what happened. So in Psalm 32, verse 3, it says, When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with fever heat of summer. Selah. I acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity I did not hide. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Selah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they will not reach him. So this psalmist is saying, hey, you know, I had sin in my life and my body was wasting away. So here, remember I told you that Israel is is like this terrarium, this this microcosm that that, uh, uh, we can relate to our own lives, to our own society. He says, as far as I am as an individual, the psalmist writes, when I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away and, my gro- and I was groaning all day long. So it affected my health and it affected my attitude. I was groaning all day long. He says, for day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. And you look at people where their lives are filled with sinning and with rebellion and you see this same sort of thing. And I see it all the time. I see young people come to college and all excited about things. And, and, and then I watch them and I watch their lives over a period of years. And they get beset by sin and they turn into different individuals. Not only is, is their health uh, a problem, it's just their vitality, it's just strained. But then the psalmist says, I acknowledged my sin to you. And my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Just like that. That's who our God is. That's because we have, we have something much better than this psalmist had. We had the the intercession of the Lord on our behalf, the intercession of Jesus, his death on the cross for us. This is something as believers that we can draw into. As unbelievers, we, we, there's not this sort of thing until you cry out and to, you receive the Lord. And Jesus spoke of this same thing. Just, just, to, just this week, I was reading, I was reading in, in, uh, in, in the gospel according to John. And there's this man who is 
who is unable to walk for 38 years, 38 years infirmed. I mean, think about that. 38 years, he's unable to walk and he's, he's infirmed. And it says in, in John chapter 5, verse 5 through 7, and there was a man who had been ill for 38 years when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition. He said to him, do you wish to get well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And so, you know, in another gospel, it explains how an angel used to occasionally stir up the water of that pool and the first person to step into it would be healed. And he says, no one, no one here to help me. So the man not only was infirmed and unable to walk for 38 years, he had nobody to help him. So imagine being disabled and having no one to help you. That's this man. Jesus comes to him and says, do you wish to get well? Do you wish to get well? Jesus asked him, do you wish to get well? You know, pe people sometimes write to me and they, they tell me their views about God. And, and I always write back. I say, do you wish, do you desire to have a time with me when I can tell you about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Because I want to hear them. I want to see them write to me that they desire that time with me. People sometimes, mothers will write to me on behalf of their, their children. Will you speak to my child? They say, sure, but your child has to write to me and request the meeting. That sets the tone for our meeting. And Jesus said, do you wish to get well? So that, that's his question. Uh, you could say, well, isn't it obvious, Jesus? But Jesus asked him the question, do you wish to get well? And it goes on how Jesus healed him. He told him to take up your, your, your pallet, take up your mat and walk. And it says, Jesus slipped away into the crowds. And the man was questioned, why are you carrying your, your pallet on the Sabbath day? He says, well, the, the man who healed me told me to pick it up and walk away. And I did. I don't know who healed me. It says, Jesus has slipped away in the crowd. But Jesus afterward found the man in the temple area. So in verse 14 of John chapter 5, it says this. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. How could it be worse than having 38 years of being disabled and no one to help me? How could it be any worse than that? But Jesus said, if you sin anymore, something worse than that is going to befall you. Jesus said that. Sin has a tremendous effect on our lives. We can't mess around with these things. You know, the Bible says... Uh, uh, if you touch another man's wife, you will in no way go unpunished. I mean, if this doesn't put the fear of God in you, I don't know what will. You will in no way go unpunished. I mean, the, the warnings that God has on these sort of things, and sin has its effect. He says, I, I, I've just, all these things have come upon you, and still you're in rebellion. And, and uh, uh, so you see the effects of sin upon a life. Here you see the effects of sin upon a city, the city of Jerusalem, the, the state of, of Judah. You see the effects of this. He says, you've been so beaten up. And now he's going to describe in detail why he is using this analogy of bruises on a body. So if you look in verse 7 of Isaiah, your land is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your fields, strangers are devouring them in your presence. It is desolation as overthrown by strangers. I mean, so he starts outlining for them how battered they are. Your land is desolate. That means without inhabitant. So what had happened is Sennacherib, who was king of Assyria, one of the, the later kings of Assyria, because the Assyrian Empire was about a hundred years before its end. It was still strong, but it was about a, a century before its end. The Babylonians were, were going to take over, really, and, and start coming up 50 years, 100 years later, something like that. But Sennacherib had overthrown Judah, this whole state of Judah. He had, they, had, they, had, uh, uh, um, they had totally wiped out 46 fortified cities. So around Jerusalem, 
you had 46 smaller cities. And you can visit many of those cities today and, and, uh, uh, because they're on these tells. These tells are, 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 are where, where, um, where a city has been destroyed and then they would build another city on top of it. And then that city is destroyed, they build another one on top of it. So you can go to Israel today, you can see cities where there, there were ancient cities. And when I say a city, I mean, it, it's, it's not like the city of Houston in size. Uh, even Jerusalem, the old city of Jerusalem is rather small. I would take this one city block, this one city block that we are on, it's not very big, and, and, and to say that is bigger than many of the quote unquote cities that they're talking about. Because you can, and you can look up at this, this elevated area and they built on top of this. So you can see the tell that where one of these layers was the very cities that they were talking about. They had, the, the, the Assyrians had conquered and totally wiped out and burned with fire the, and destroyed 46 fortified cities. Only Jerusalem was left. And this is what he's saying. You're totally devastated. And still you're holding on to this stuff. Still you're holding on to your rebellion. Your land is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your fields, strangers devouring them in your presence. They're in Jerusalem and they see the Assyrians taking advantage of all the planted fields they had. They can't come out of Jerusalem. He said it is desolation overthrown by strangers. And Sennacherib also took 200,000 Israelites, 200,000 of them, and displaced them. That was the Assyrian way. That's what he had done with the 10 tribes of the north, taken them and displaced them and took, he took other people groups and moved them into that area. And that's why the, you, you have the Samaritans, which were displaced people from other locales that were brought into the land of Israel, into the kingdom of the north, and they had mixed with some of the people that were left there. So there were some of the, the, the mixed race. But here, here you, they had taken 200,000 people. And so this is what he's referring to. You're totally beat up. If you do not believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, send me an email and give me a chance to tell you by Zoom why I believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says it is, it is desolation as overthrown. This is this word overthrown uh, uh, by strangers. This word overthrown is, is this devastation that is reminiscent of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, there were Sodom and Gomorrah in two other cities. There were four cities in total. Zeboim and uh, uh, I forget the name of the fourth one, began with an A, that were overthrown when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and uh, many, many Messianic scholars, you know, some people are saying that they, they found the ancient city of, of Sodom. Uh, uh, but many Messianic scholars think that Sodom and Gomorrah and those two other cities are at the, the bottom of the Dead Sea. That, that, that's where they are. I mean, the ground just sunk right on down and just filled with salt because salt rained down from the sky upon them. And so, so uh, uh, he says, this is, this is the word overthrown. This is the word that he's getting at, the same thing. This is the type of judgment that came upon other cities, not upon Israel. These came upon other cities that had come again, other lands that had come against Israel. Now it's come upon them. He says, You're, it's desolation is overthrown by strangers. Then he says, the daughter of Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard. When it says daughter, singular, this word bat, it means a general population. When he says daughter of Zion, that's the general population. When daughter is used in conjunction with, a, with, with, with an area, with a locale, that means it's the general population. If he uses the word daughters, that means the female population of that city, of that locale. But it's, it's singular. And so th that's talking of all the people in Zion. The daughter of Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a watchman's hut in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. So the only thing that Sennacherib was, did not overcome because of the direct intervention of God was the city of Jerusalem. That's the only city that was left in, in Judea. That's it. Around Judea, you had these cities. They had all been wiped out, 46 cities wiped out. It was just Jerusalem which is up on this hill. So he says, this is like a, a watchman's hut in a cucumber patch. That's how he describes it. And because it's, it's, it's up on this mountain. And, uh, uh, and, he, and he says, 
unless the Lord of hosts had left us a few for survivors, we would be like Sodom. We would be like Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah totally wiped out unless the Lord had left us a little bit. And so, you know, I, I see this sort of thing. I, I see this. I was, I was, interestingly enough, I was sharing with a guy this week. And uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe he's even online with us today. And, and um, he, you know, we, we didn't talk too much about, about him personally. Uh, but but um, so we were, I was sharing with him. And uh, he seemed to me like a very lonely man. He was in his, his late 50s. He was semi-retired, retired from his main line of work. And uh, um, uh, seemed to me like a lonely man. He, he didn't have any children. I asked him, I, I didn't ask him if he was married, but uh, uh, I asked him if he had any children, and he said no. And uh, seemed to me to be quite lonely. And he received the Lord. He listened. He took, he took scrupulous notes as I was sharing. What really interested him, interested him was the resurrection. He wanted to know more about the science behind the resurrection. And I, you know, it's not like I study the science of the resurrection, but I told him what I know. And, and, um, and he ended up praying with me. And I, I was so delighted that he had prayed with me. And he agreed to, you know, I, I talked about uh, getting in the word of God daily and then meeting with a friend of mine for 13 weeks to go through through a, 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 a Bible study for 13 weeks online with a friend of mine, one-on-one. -on -one. And I do this with all the people that I lead to the Lord. I get them involved in daily for the rest of their lives to greet a 15 minutes of reading in the Word of God every morning, going through starting with the Gospel of John and then going into Bible study. And then two days later, he wrote to me. He said, I don't, I don't think I'm going to get involved in the Bible study. I'll just kind of read the Bible now and then just look into it myself. I don't want to get involved. And my heart just sunk. My heart just sunk because here was this lonely man who really was just on the precipice of his whole life changing. And I had described to him how his life would change if he followed through on the practices that I had. Because you can receive the Lord, but the growth in the Lord comes by walking with the Lord, comes by doing the things that he says. Jesus said, if, if, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And my Father will love him. My Father will love you. And we will come to you and make our abode with you. And my heart just sank because he has made a decision to stay aloof, to stay aloof from the body of Christ. I was so excited because what happens when they start getting into the Word of God and get into Bible study, they, they join a local church generally and they get baptized and they, they get friends and, and the whole lives change. People go from being lonely to not being lonely anymore. And my heart just sank for this man because I felt sorry for him. I felt sorry for this lonely man. And I, and I hope he is watching online today. That would be great because I did send him the link to this Bible study. But he says, all of this has happened to you. You're all alone and you're all beat up and, and uh, uh, there's, there's nothing left there. And so he, he's, he's relating this. And so I see this all the time. I see people totally beat up by this world because sin is devastating. Sin is destructive. Jesus said to a man who had been lame for 38 years without, without a, a, a personal caregiver, and he says to him, something worse is going to befall you if you sin. I mean, this is, this is amazing. This is what sin will, will bring into your life. And so it, it's a very serious thing. And he says, he's, he talks about this. If you look in, in uh, he says in verse 9, he says, unless the Lord of hosts had left us a few survivors. And uh, uh, so I want you to look in Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 27. And Paul is quoting from the book of Isaiah. Paul, as he's writing the book of Romans, he quotes from Isaiah. And in Romans 9, 27, it says, Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of the sons of Israel be like the sand of the sea, it is the remnant that will be saved. For the Lord will execute his word on the earth thoroughly and quickly. And just as Isaiah foretold, unless the Lord of Sabbath had left to us a posterity, we would have become like Sodom and we would have resembled Gomorrah. So he is making reference to this very passage in the New Testament. And he's saying there was a remnant that was left. And this is always what you see in Israel. 
You see a remnant that was left. You see nation going astray and a remnant that was left. And it is this, this doctrine of the remnant, this remnant that God works through. And today you see the same thing. There is this messianic community, this community that believes Jesus is the Messiah that has received him because there is life only in Jesus. There's no other way. You, you, read, you read John, John chapter 3, verse, I think, 36, the last verse of that chapter. I mean, he who believes in the Son has life. He who disbelieves shall be condemned, it says in the King James. He who, who does not believe in the Son does not have life, but the wrath of God abides on him. The scriptures say it's only in the Son. That's the only way. That's the only way. He is the Messiah. And so it's this remnant, this remnant that, 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 that uh, he's talking about. It's always been that way. And if you look again in Romans chapter 11, he speaks about this remnant. There was this occasion where Elijah the prophet thought he was the only one left who followed God. I mean, he thought he was the only one left. One day you might feel like you're the only one left following God. But that's not the case. There's a remnant. And so God says to him, in, so, so in Romans chapter 11, verse 1, I say then, God has not rejected his people, has he? May it never be. For I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So you see that, that, uh, um, that Paul is, is, is saying God has not forsaken the people of Israel. And many people in the church today think God has forsaken the people of Israel. He has not. He says, has, I say then, God has not rejected his people. Has he? May it never be. Remember, that's the strongest words of negation that you can have. May it never be in the Greek. For I too am, am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So these guys knew their tribe. He knew his tribal identity. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scriptures say in the passage about Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have torn down your altars and I alone am left and they are seeking my life. But what is the divine response to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. In the same way, there has also come to be at present time a remnant according to God's gracious choice there is a remnant and this is what he's talking about in Isaiah if he had he not left to us a few survivors there would be nothing left this is the remnant this is the remnant he's talking about Jesus said wide is the way wide is the way that leads to destruction most people are going down that way the masses of people are going to destruction <clears throat> he said narrow is the way Jesus said Narrow is the way that leads to life. It has always been this way. The vast majority of people do not receive. There's a remnant. It happened in Israel. It happens around us. It is a small amount that will be saved. He says, unless the Lord of hosts had left to us a few survivors, we would be like Sodom. We would be like Gomorrah. <clears throat> the masses are, are going down and they are utterly, utterly lost. And it breaks my heart. I was addressing a a big group of people at an Ivy League university this week, and, and uh, um, we were talking about origin of life, but for some reason I got zero scientific questions. I, I, was, I, I was loaded for bear. I, I, I could answer anything on origin of life. You ask me now. I answer anything. <laughs> just, I, I just, I am studied up. I, I've, I've studied this. I've reviewed for my final. I, 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 can, I, can, I can say it. I got not a single question. People kept asking about, you, you know, my faith. They wanted to know about my faith. And it wasn't, I don't think it's because they were really interested in my faith. I think it was because they were trying to, <clears throat> to use it as an excuse for my not going along with their, their nonsense about, about their, their, their proposals on origin of life. And at one point I said, look, I love Jesus more than anything else in the world. He means so much to me. Now, there is a, a Christian guy there who wrote, me, wrote to me afterward, and he said, you never should have said that in a gathering like that. He said, you, you, you know, it made, made you sound like, a, like, like some fanatic. 
<laughs> and you know, th this, is, this is life. What I was giving them was life. What I was presenting to them was a way out. Somebody who's passionate about Jesus, who was presenting them, and they set it up. I didn't come ready to speak about that, but they, they asked me the question and they kept pushing me on it. And they set it up. And, and even Christians, even the quote unquote Christian person in the room felt that that was too much. <clears throat> and uh, 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 I'll tell you, there is a narrow way that leads to life. And you see the same thing in this pattern of scripture. The same thing. Remember, Israel is a microcosm for our own society. And if we judge them, we judge them at our own peril because we stumble with the same sort of things. We have the same rebellion. If it were not, if it were not for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, for his mercy, we would go exactly the same way of rebellion as they went. Not just passiveness, but rebellion against the Lord. And you could see this rebellion in some of their eyes when I would say such a thing as this. And uh, 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 this is what he's talking about, the same sort of thing today. And that's why Paul says, where is the wise and intelligent? Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? God takes the base things of the world and the despised, the foolish things, to confound the wise. He takes the base things to confound the wise. We are very blessed to be among the remnant, to be among the remnant of humankind that, that have this mercy of God poured out upon our lives. I'll tell you, it's no great choice of our own. Certainly we participate in this, but if God himself had not reached out to us, there is no way we would have done this on our own. Everything, everything is by the grace of God. Every step that we take toward him is by his grace and by his hand upon us. He is so good. And every remnant, every person that was left there in, in Jerusalem, every person that was pr protected, every person that was not dragged off was because of the utter mercy of God upon them. We all deserve to have been dragged off. We all deserve to be going down that wicked, that, that broad way. But God has interceded and he has plucked us out of that broad way and set us into that narrow path. It is God that has taken it out. And you know how I know that for myself? Because if God had take, not taken me out of it, I never would have gotten out of it myself. If he had not interceded in my life, I never would have gotten out of it myself. My brother, my sister, my cousins, I mean, none of them, none of them have come to the Lord. My mother came to the Lord at the age of 72. My father, a week before he, he, he went to, to be with the Lord. But had God not interceded in my life, and it's the same with all of us, with all of us, it is only in the Lord. So I tell you, if you do not know the Lord, give me a chance to share with you. I will share with you about the Lord. If you're online, give me a chance to, to share with you. Send an email to tour. T-O-U-R at drjamestour.org, tour at drjamestour.org, and it'll be in the description box below. And just write to me and we will get together and you'll get saved that very day. I see it over and over again. I see it all the time. I just saw it, just saw it this week with that guy that chose not to, to walk on with the Lord. He's like the, the, the seed that, was, that sprung up immediately but had no depth of soil. And, and, uh, and I saw it again in a, in a young woman just yesterday from Africa, and, uh, 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 and so, so I see it all the time. Let it be with you, let it be with you next. So just write to me and request that meeting. We'll have that meeting together, and let's reason together, and you get saved that day. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your word, the truth of your word. Thank you, Lord, as we see this picture that you have established of a man being totally beaten from the soles of his feet to his head. Father, this is what happens to a life that walks in rebellion with you. Father, I pray that you would take these young people and cause them to walk with you. 
Father, that they may experience the goodness of God in their lives. And then when the difficult times come, that they would see that you have not abandoned them, but you are right there. Father, have mercy on their young lives, I pray. And Lord, I pray also for the, the unsaved. Father, that they would get saved, that we would see salvations. Lord, let me see salvations this day. And let Jesus Christ be glorified. And Father, I pray for those men and women that were there at that, in, that school that I was speaking at this week, that you would save souls. That when I said Jesus, Jesus means more to me than anything else, that those words would resonate within them and shake them and draw them to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to his name. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It is all because of you. Thank you for what you have done. Amen. If you're enjoying this series, give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. And that way you'll hear when we're coming out with new videos. There are no salaried employees in this organization. All the accounting, all the legal work, that's all done by friends of mine. The only thing that I have to pay for is the production work. And if you could help us out with that, I'd appreciate it. There's a link below where you can just click on that and help us in several different ways. Thank you. Thank you.